In this video, I'm going to show you the process of making this happy blue statement scarf from scratch on a floor loom. The first step in the weaving process is to put a warp on the loom. A warp makes up all of the fabric's vertical threads. For this project, I'm going to use this blue cotton ready-made warp from Japan, which is long enough to make two scarves. After many hours of tediously threading the loom and some editing magic, the loom is now warped and ready for weaving. Now it's time to prepare the yarns that I'm going to weave with, which are called the weft yarns. I'm winding a whole assortment of yarns onto plastic bobbins, which turns a ball of yarn into something that I can easily weave with. I picked out all of these yarns because I thought that their cool toned colors and varied textures worked really well together and also complemented the bright blue warp. I also used this yarn, which was too chunky to wind onto a bobbin. Now that the yarns are wound onto bobbins, they fit nicely into a boat shuttle and I can start weaving. Weaving might seem super complicated, but it's actually really easy. I press down on one foot pedal, which raises every other warp thread. I then pass the shuttle between the threads that are lifted and the threads that aren't and pack it tightly. When I then press the other foot pedal, the other half of the yarns are lifted and I can pass the yarn back the other way. Basically, I just keep doing this until I have a length of fabric that I'm happy with. To make the designs my own, I can change up the yarns that I'm using and incorporate new colors, textures, and designs to add interest to the fabric. In this time lapse, you'll see me throwing in a whole bunch of random weaving techniques, like making stripes and also making those jagged little mountain-like designs. To me, weaving is a form of meditation. I love sitting at the loom and letting myself get lost in the process of acting on random creative impulses. It's like creating a large abstract painting with yarn. After a few hours of weaving, I wanted to take a short break, so I unwrapped the finished fabric from the loom to see how much of the scarf I'd finish, so I'd know how much fabric I had left to go. I really like my scarves to be long, so I aimed for about 2.3 meters of finished fabric. Funny enough, I was almost exactly at the halfway point when I stopped for my break. I wanted to use this part of the video to tell you about a nonprofit that's super close to my heart called the Youth Arts Collective, or YAC for short. I grew up in Monterey, California, and I had the privilege of participating in this program, which offered an after school art studio and mentorship program for local young artists. YAC provides students with supplies, studio space, art training, exhibition, commission opportunities, mentoring, and a strong community unlike anything else I've experienced before. I'm donating the scarf from this video to YAC's upcoming virtual art auction. So from July 30th to August 7th, this scarf, along with many other student and alumni works, will be available for bidding. Check out the link in this video's description to learn more about this fundraising event and this amazing organization. Okay, back to the weaving. After another few hours of working on the scarf, I was at the length that I wanted and ready to remove it from the loom. Hey Ryan. What's 150 plus 73? Yeah. What? Thank you. When it was time to cut the fabric off of the loom, I first clamped down my warp threads, which makes it so that I can keep using the same blue warp for scarf number two. I then cut the fabric using what are apparently the dullest scissors in the whole world. I then reset the loom so I can weave my second scarf later on in the week. The next step was to figure out what to do with the scarf's fringes. I decided to hand twist the fringes using a technique I learned from Kenzo Joe at Sari no Mori in Japan. 
This is definitely a super time consuming and finicky process, but I really like the look of the twisted fringes, so it's absolutely worth it. The next step is to wash the fabric, which sets the weave and makes the fabrics look their best. I filled a basin with warm water and a no-rinse wool wash, then added both scarves. I gently pushed the scarves under the water to make sure they were completely submerged, and then left them to soak for about 15 minutes. And of course, Frankie supervised. After the 15 minute bath time was up, I drained the water, then laid the scarves out in a towel sandwich, rolled them up, and squished them to remove as much of the water as possible. I then hung the scarves up to dry overnight. The next morning when the fabric was completely dry, I gave them a quick pass with the iron. I also decided to stitch on a cute little faux leather label with my name on it. Because this scarf will hopefully be going to another home, I wanted to put my signature on it. And here's how the finished scarf turned out. This was the first scarf that I made in this video, which you saw in the time lapse, and this scarf will be available for bidding at the Yak auction starting July 30th, 2021. And here's how my matching scarf turned out. This scarf isn't exactly the same as the first one because weaving an exact replica would be no fun, but it uses the exact same yarns and has similar design elements, just woven in its own unique way. Of course, it had to be 92 degrees outside on the day that I decided to go out and wear a wool scarf. So after a long day of filming in the heat, I stopped by the ice cream truck and got a cone that matched my outfit. Thank you so much for watching this video. Don't forget to check out the link in my description to learn more about this amazing nonprofit and their virtual art auction. And I'll see you in my next weaving video.